Twitter.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Dave All. If you're on Twitter. Um, so uh, I guess just to start it off, a little interaction. Show of hands, who here reads blogs? Everyone. Uh, who here writes for a blog, either anonymously or whatever? Yeah, okay, few. Yeah. How many of your clients ask you about blogs? Yeah, pretty much everyone. Okay, so this is the way that, that communication is heading in certainly our industry. Um, what I do is I work with uh, conservative nonprofits, libertarian nonprofits, um, and public relations firms uh, who want to reach out to the conservative blogosphere and help build online communities. And of course, I work with politicians um, to help build websites and help understand that uh, the term web surfing is dead. Um, people are no longer wasting their time endlessly walking around the internet. People are so focused on finding exactly what they want that there are about 10 websites that take about 99% of the viewership every day. So that's just one quick way to sort of think about how the internet has changed. But what I want to think about and talk about with you today is based on my experience um, with the three M's of modern media um, that I think that you can use in your pitches and when you're talking with your clients and kind of relate as you're looking at the space uh, later. So the three M's are medium, message, and money. So I'll start with the first, and that's the medium. So you all may remember the Makaka video that came out uh, that took down George Allen. You may, may have heard of it, may have not. But basically, it was a video that came out um, where George Allen in Southern Virginia at a small gathering of Virginians pointed over to a YouTube camera just like that and started talking to the camera and saying uh, some things that were perceived as racist. Um, and the video came out, started to go viral, everything else. The problem there was that George Allen didn't respond. And when he did respond, he did not, he did not do so through the same medium. So he was being attacked through YouTube. But the people who were looking for a response never found that response via YouTube. So let's fast forward a little bit. Um, January 9, 2007, the, the first YouTube macaca moment surfaces in a video posted by an anonymous YouTube user called So This Is Washington. Um, and it's a video which featured 1994 debate footage of Mitt Romney and Senator Ted Kennedy. And the video showed Mitt Romney, who was used to be a candidate for uh, president, it showed him talking favorably about things like abortion, and basically, you know, he was flip-flopping. It started, it was the beginning of the flip-flopping narrative that was starting. The next day, Mitt Romney responded to that video through a YouTube video, and it was a revolutionary moment for me, because these guys have finally understood that you have to, if you're going to respond, you have to do so through the same medium. So that's the first sort of lesson that I would, I would think about. Um, with regard to medium, you'll also know when you look at Mitt Romney's video, he was very authentic <coughs> in his answer. He admitted that he was wrong. I mean, this is, this is groundbreaking stuff for politicians, to admit that they're wrong and to just put that out there. But by doing that, they were able to completely spin the story so that the stories that came out the very next day were not Mitt Romney is flip-flop, yada, yada. It was Mitt Romney has the most effective communications team in the business. And look how well he responded, etc. So moving on quickly to number two, message. Um, actually today, the Telegraph, since I know we have some folks from overseas, the Telegraph reported uh, that Nicholas Sarkozy has hired a internet spin doctor. Um, <laughs> It was, it was a young 24-year-old kid who worked for Sarkozy on the campaign. But there's a narrative that Sarko has been ignoring that is now solidified because of YouTube videos and because of videos like this. Um, and what has happened is, for example, um, apparently Sarko was speaking at a press conference at the G8 summit and he looked like he was drunk. The video has over 10 million views on YouTube. Zero 
Um, zero mentions in the mainstream media, but 10 million views on YouTube and Daily Motion, which is the French version. Um, and then another video where he tells a, a constituent, get lost, you stupid bastard, <laughs> has 3 million views, and that was just released a month ago. So finally, just today, right, and my, I wrote this in a blog post today, it's better late than never, you know, Sarko has finally hired someone whose job it is to focus on this new medium, and he does that because he understands that that is where the message starts. It, it's now getting planted and driven and pounded through people's heads. And trust me, every time people write blog posts, most people understand that you need to push out your content to influential readers. So, for example, if I write something, I'll send it to Cyrus if I think he needs to read it. And then Cyrus will read it. You know, because it gets it in his email, but I can't just hope that he's going to read my blog. Well, the same thing is true with reporters. So when people post these interesting YouTube videos and they think it's a news story, they send them up the chain. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Moving on quickly, kind of running out of time here, uh, money. This is the last M, but the most important, and it's the one that, you know, will make our industry what it is. Uh, the long tail of politics is something that I spend a lot of time talking about. There's a book by Chris Anderson called The Long Tail. And the basic theory of The Long Tail, which I recommend you all reading, is that the internet has given everyone an equal playing field with regard to distribution. So because of things like MySpace, because of things like YouTube, artists, recording artists, are able to get around recording companies to get their music out. They're also able to Back in the 1960s, if you wanted to sell records, you had to have your album or your, your top hit played by Casey Kasem's Top 40. Because those were in the record companies and stores, the brick and mortar industries, those were the only records that they would ever carry. But now, because of the internet, things have changed. And now, we can use the internet to reach out to people that we've never reached out to before. Because remember, in politics, it all comes down to, to time and how much time and resources you can spend doing something. So in 2004, President George W. Bush tagged, tapped this giant network of fundraisers called Pioneers and Rangers, who knew people who could raise $250,000 from their network of friends. Bundlers is the term. Well, I don't know anyone who has even $1,000 to give to John McCain. But I do have a thousand friends on Facebook, I have a few hundred people who follow me on Twitter, I have a blog, and I have a pretty big email list. And I bet I could raise a thousand dollars or ten times that if I were to ask each of those people to contribute at least ten dollars. So this gets into this new term of baby bundlers, and that's what I consider myself. Because I'm able to raise money for someone in baby quantities, but when you add that up, there are a lot more people in America that are like me than are at the upper crust of the Republican fundraising uh, platform. Not to, not to say that those people don't deserve chicken dinners and handshakes and, and pictures with the president and everything else, but not everyone wants that. In fact, we're seeing that um, come to light, especially on the Democratic side, with Barack Obama. A few figures to think about to sort of firm this up. In January, 90% of Barack Obama's $32 million haul came from online donations. 90%. In February, 45 of his $55 million came in from online. 90% of those online donations were less than $100. And 50% of those online donations were less than $25. This is tremendous, right? These are people who have never contributed money before. So this is my friend Chris, who owns a shoe store back in Columbus, Ohio, where I'm from, who's never contributed to anything in his life before, but now he's given $15 a month to Barack Obama to elect Barack Obama as, as our next president, and he's been doing that for the past year and a half. When you add that up, there are a lot more people out there like Chris than there are the folks who are going to write the checks for $2,300. So with that, I'll pass along. Thank you. Um, is this on? Okay. Hi.